Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Repiron, and today we're going to be doing a tier list. Uh, this has been requested a lot the last little while, especially with uh, all of the new people getting into Deep Rock. Uh, asking if I could do a weapons tier list. And I've done this once before with both the primaries and secondaries, and I was okay with it. But looking back on it, it's not really super fair to be comparing the class's weapons against one another. Well, at least it is in the class itself. So, like, comparing gunner weapons to gunner weapons is completely fair because they're your picks. So, I, I feel like that's not an issue. But comparing every other weapon to them is a little bit of a, an issue, because if you compare something like, with, let's say, like the Sabata to the minigun, yeah, it's not really surprising that the minigun's going to completely destroy the Sabata in practically every category. It's a primary weapon for gunner versus a secondary weapon for driller. You're never going to be in a situation where you can use both, assuming there isn't a mod out that lets you do that, which there might be, I'm not sure. So I've made this tier list, which as you can see only has four categories, and it's not S, A, B, C, the usual categories on our tier list. I, I want this to be more of a discussion video and more of a video that you could potentially point to for somebody asking if they want a weapon for a particular job for their class. Now, even these categories are kind of vague, and I sort of have to do them that way, especially if we're going to be talking about overclocks, which I will be talking about overclocks in this video. As a second resource, I'm going to be using Carl.gg. Um, this is a great free calculator that's online. Just type in Carl, K-A-R-L dot G-G, and you'll be on this site. This can show you other build guides that people have put together for different classes, as well as their tips for them. You can also get access to a calculator here that shows you all of your stats for the weapons, including things like your total potential damage, um, the magazine, the amount of damage that you do per magazine, how long your, in this case, like sticky flames last, uh, flame reach, everything like that. So it's a very useful resource. You can also check out all of the overclocks that are available on here too. This includes the new primary weapons or newest primary weapons. Um, this will probably be updated too when the new secondaries come out. That's not going to be till months down the line, and it does take them a little while to get everything set up because you have to test everything and then put it all in here and all that fun stuff. So with our tier list here, I have put our categories as single target damage. So this is weapons that are more useful against single targets. Now, again, overclocks can make a weapon very good at single target damage, like the Ice Spear with the Cryo Cannon lets you have really high single target damage, but the Cryo Cannon itself is okay against single targets, so... It probably itself wouldn't fit here, but with the Ice Spear, yeah, it definitely would. And if you need that, that's a good option. Then we've got Swarms. This is for mostly crowds, maybe weapons that don't do as well against single targets or potentially do even better against crowds, so they're going to end up here. We have General Purpose as our third category. This is for weapons that kind of do both of these jobs well, but maybe don't specialize in one or the other. So it, it they work well against crowds, they work well against uh, single targets, they can work well at ranges, and then we have support weapons. So these are weapons more towards the team. They're not going to be necessarily as good in solo, sometimes it depends. Um, it, it heavily depends on overclocks, again, uh, if you're or whatever build you're running with it. But this is weapons that can be built in a supportive role to where they can uh, help out the team overall, I would say. First up, we're going to go through the primaries, then the secondaries, and our first class is going to be Driller. So first up, we have the Flamethrower. And I would put the Flamethrower probably in the Swarms category, because the Flamethrower, it's pretty decent against single target enemies, but it's really good against hordes. That's where it really shines. Um, for general purpose, it's not bad either. Like, you can use it for just about every job. If you take Flame Reach on it, it can be pretty strong. Same with if you take the Flame Reach Overclock. You can have something like a 20 meter flame that actually makes you pretty scary against flying enemies too. Um, so, you know, with like that Overclock, you could have it. But almost all of its Overclocks are more towards Swarms. You've got uh, Overclocks that just give you more fuel, so they could go with whatever. You've got, um, like, the Face Melter Overclock that shortens your reach but increases your damage quite a bit. So you've got, like, Sticky Flames that increases your Sticky Flame damage as well as the amount of duration that it has there. So it's even better against Swarms. Um, so I, I think the Flamethrower fits best here. Um, like I said, it could work pretty well as a general purpose weapon, and it could even be a supportive weapon, too, in the group. If you're taking, like, the full slowdown with it, especially if you're going with Sticky Flames with the slowdown, it takes a very long time for things to walk across, but I think Swarms is where I would probably put this, because I think that's where it is best. Then we have the Cryo Cannon. The Cryo Cannon, I think I'm going to put into general purpose, because the Cryo Cannon works really well against Hordes, it works pretty well against single targets, 
It can work well against flying enemies, at least if you're going with reach. If you're not going with the reach, then the flying enemies are kind of hit or miss depending on the area you're fighting in. If you're in a uh, tight cave, it's not so bad, but if you're out in the open, it can be a bit tougher. You can build this for uh, fast freezing. You can build this for sustained uh, freezing. With the overclocks, you have some great ones that synergize really well with that, like Tuned Cooler. You can have the clean one. I don't remember what that one's called. Let's actually look it up right now. The improved thermal efficiency, which is just a straight bonus to the weapon. You've got Ice Spear for single target damage. You have like Ice Storm, which is also even more single target damage. Even though it lowers your freezing uh, abilities, it's still quite good. You got Snowball that's great for crowds. So you've got a lot of options with it. And I think it fits best here. Uh, again, with overclocks, you can move it around. And it does work pretty well as a supportive weapon, too. It also works really well in conjunction with Driller. Because you can have something like Vampire. And this will count for your pickaxe, your throwing axes, your drills. Um, so you can kill frozen enemies very easy. Get your health back. There, there's a lot of options that you can do with the Cryo Cannon. And it's quite good at just about everything, I would say. And then we've got the Corrosive Sludge Pump as our last weapon. And I'm going to put the Sludge Pump in the support category. It does work pretty well against Swarms. It's okay against single targets, kind of like the Flamethrower, although I think I would say the Flamethrower is a little bit better, because it always slows down enemies that are hit by it, which is really, really useful, especially on the higher difficulties for your team. You do have some pretty good overclocks with this one, too, where we have some of our clean overclocks that are pretty decent, our balanced overclocks that are really good. We've got Goo Bomber to slow things down. We got Sludge Blast, which is more for single target damage, but it comes with such a nerf that it's not really that great of an option. Um, against big targets, the Sludge Pump isn't really one of the best because it takes a while to kill, although it does slow enemies down, so if your job is not to really kill it, if you have like a scout that's running around with the M1000 or something, or, a, or you have more damage on like your secondary, or you just want to get close with your throwing axes, which are great for single target damage, um, the Corrosive Sludge Pump's really good at that. It's really good at taking care of, like, little swarmers. You can throw this just about anywhere, and it will be pretty handy. You can light the Sludge on fire, too, so you can do some extra AoE damage with it. It's probably one of the most uh, team-supportive weapons that we have right now. Moving on to Driller's secondaries, we have the Sabata. And for Driller, I think the Sabata would probably fit best in general purpose, because this is your longest range option and your best... Even though this is maybe your best single target, at least not considering overclocks, uh, at, at least at range, it works really well on Driller as a general purpose weapon. You can kill small enemies with this pretty fast. Overclocks on it are okay. Um, some of them aren't necessarily the best, but some of them are pretty good. Where we've got like Oversized Magazine to give us more ammo. We've got the Explosive Reload, which does uh, make this more of a single target weapon. And it would probably put it up there. We've got like Trank Rounds, which would probably make it more of a supportive weapon because we're uh, stunning enemies more often. Got Automatic Fire so we can spray this into hordes or spray this into a single target. So it, it's got a lot of options and the Spotter really isn't that bad of a gun. It's kind of a basic pistol, but uh, it does every job that Driller kind of needs it to do. So I think general purpose is where it would kind of be best suited. And then we have the EPC. Which, this weapon's a little bit weird, because this weapon is kind of all of these categories, as well as a tool. So, I think I'm going to put this one into support as well, because there's a couple different ways that you can use this. You can use it as solely a tool, just going with the EPC mining, so you go with thin containment field, and you go with, like, the most ammo efficiency that you can, as well as the most ammo. Uh, which is usually the way that I run this, and plenty of other people run it that way. So, you're mostly using this for mining rocks that are further away. So if you need nitra, if you need gold, um, if you need something that's high up, you, you can mine them pretty fast and pretty efficiently with this. And the thin containment field also works really well for doing very high amounts of damage in an area. So it can be really good for swarms and it can be really good for single targets. With some of its overclocks, you could go with things like heat pipe to have even more ammo efficiency for mining. You could go with heavy hitter if you want to spam fire this and deal uh, higher uh, single target damage. You can go with Overcharger and something like Flying Nightmare as a, uh, the tier 5 mod and do really well against flying hordes or just any hordes in general. You can completely destroy swarmers with that. You can go with Persistent Plasma, still use it for mining, but then have the added uh, slowdown as well as the added damage over time effect from it. So that's kind of what I mean. It, it fits into pretty much all of these categories pretty well, but I think it's the way that it's usually used is in a supportive or in a tool role. So I think I'm going to put it there. 
you could argue that it could belong into any of these categories, though. All right, then we've got gunner's weapons. First up, we got the minigun. And I'm going to put the minigun in general purpose, because the minigun is pretty good at just about everything. It's good against swarms, it's good against flying enemies, it's good against range enemies, and it's good against large enemies. Downsides of the minigun are that it can overheat, which isn't necessarily a downside if you run something like aggressive venting with it. For overclocks, the minigun doesn't really have any bad overclocks, nor does it have any like super specialized overclocks, I would say. All of these are pretty good. You have damaging overclocks, you have ammo overclocks, you've got some like elemental overclocks, you've got something like bullet hell, which is super fun and can be really good against hordes. That would probably make it more of a swarm weapon. Uh, and something like Lead Storm might make it more of a single target weapon, but it would still work pretty well against swarms too. All the rest of these, I would say that they work really well against just about everything. So I, I feel like it's probably one of the more flexible weapons for Gunner, and it's never going to be really a bad option to take on any mission. Next up, we have the Auto Cannon, which the Auto Cannon I'm going to put into the swarms category. The Auto Cannon really excels at swarms. It can do well against single targets, and it can be uh, more of a general purpose weapon, but where it really shines is against swarms especially with uh, some of its overclocks. Like any of the AoE ones, so splintering shells, carpet bomber, neurotoxin rounds completely destroy hordes. And at least like splintering shells is still pretty good against everything. Carpet bomber and neurotoxin rounds, it's mostly made for swarms. Big Bertha does give you an option for doing pretty good single target damage. I would say that this is probably best with the swarms category though. Unless it's like Big Bertha and then maybe single target or maybe general purpose then because it is pretty good against everything then. And you could also say Neurotoxins is maybe more of a support role, which I would completely agree with too. Then we've got the Hurricane, which the Hurricane I think I would put into the single target category. This weapon does really well against large enemies, against like Praetorians, Oppressors. Uh, it can work really well at long range enemies though too. So anything like uh, Spitters, whether that be Acid Spitters or Web Spitters. And uh, each of the rockets does do a pretty good amount of single target damage. They also explode in an AoE though, dealing damage to everything around them. With certain overclocks, they can definitely be made for swarms. They could be made for single target. It could be a general purpose weapon though too, you could argue. Um, some of these are pretty strong, like Jet Fuel Homebrew gives you even more single target damage. Salvo Module can give you even more single and uh, crowd damage. Plasma Burster missiles are very flexible in just about every roll. Mine Layer can be a lot of single target damage or a lot of horde damage, depending on what you're fighting. And two of the clean overclocks are pretty good at just dealing with everything. So I, I feel like it's more specialized for single target damage out of the gunner's primaries, though. Where the auto cannon is more for swarms and the minigun is more flexible. With overclocks, they could, of course, move around, but I feel like this is where I'd put them right now. Next, we have the Bulldog Revolver. This gun is super fun. I really love this weapon. Uh, for the Bulldog, I would put this one up into single target damage. I think that's where the Bulldog really shines. Um, uh, even with a lot of its overclocks, it really shines here, especially if you have like homebrew powder, volatile bullets, or elephant rounds, all of which just give you even more damage uh, and can be really strong. The only one that is not really for single target damage, I would say, is magic bullets, where this becomes way better for either supportive rolls or for swarms where it slows everything down and can deal high damage to just about everything. It's great for taking out big threats like Praetorians, Oppressors, Menaces, uh, Spitballers, anything at distance. The revolver is quite good. You can build this to be pretty much a pocket sniper rifle, and it can work pretty well for that. And like I said, with magic bullets, you can build this for swarms or for supportive use, and it can also be pretty good there too. All right, then we've got the burst pistol. And the burst pistol, I think I would put into the general purpose category. It's pretty flexible. Um, it's more flexible than the revolver, I would say. The burst pistol does pretty decent damage. It's fairly accurate, although it's not as accurate as like the bulldog at longer ranges. Um, and it can do pretty good damage per second as well as you can build it a couple different ways. You can build it for damage, you can build it for ammo. For overclocks, there are quite a few overclocks that change the burst pistol as well. You've got some of the basic ones that just give you either more ammo, more damage, so more of what you want. Um, then you've got some of the more extreme ones where you've got like really high damage from lead spray, but less accuracy. So it's uh, more for single target damage at close range, although you could use it for swarms at close range too. Uh, electro mindlets that are great for a supportive role because they can slow everything down and deal damage over time. And then micro flechettes, which are pretty flexible too. Up next, we have engineer's weapons. And first up, we got the warthog shotgun. Uh, the warthog, I think I'm going to put into single target damage. 
It's kind of hard to put the Warthog somewhere, though, because it does do really well against swarms, and it does work as a general purpose weapon, but I think where it can kind of outshine some of the other weapons, at least that Engineer has, is it's very high single target damage. It can shred through things like uh, Praetorians and Oppressors quite fast if you get up close to them. Now, you don't need to get super close with the shotgun. It actually does work at a pretty decent range. And if you build this for more accuracy um, or whatever the role might be, it, I could see you moving around in any of these categories right here. Maybe not so much in a supportive role, but definitely it works well against swarms and it works pretty well in a general purpose use. Um, I think this is where I'd put it with overclocks. The uh, auto shotgun is also quite fantastic, I would say. You've got some basic ones like Stunner and the Lightweight Magazine that are really good, but nothing too fancy. Uh, you've got like Magnetic Pelt Alignment that does make it so you can kill single targets very easy because you have less spread. Um, cycle Overload is great for single targets as well and can be really good for hordes. And then Mini Shells is also quite great for hordes too, especially if you combine it with like Turret Whip. It has a lot of flexibility in its overclocks. It also is a pretty flexible weapon overall, but I, I still think I'm going to put it in the single target maybe general purpose category. Uh, I guess it just depends. Then we've got Stubby here, which I think I'm going to put Stubby in the support role, mostly because you can build Stubby a couple different ways. You can build it for damage, which is kind of okay in my opinion. I don't feel like it's the best way to build Stubby. You can build it for ammo, which is pretty useful if, if you have certain secondaries that take away your ammo. Like if you're running Fat Boy, it can be really good. And you can build Stubby for Lightning, which is the main reason why I'd put it in the support role. Because most of the time, people are running Stubby as a Lightning build. Um, you're dealing AoE damage, you're uh, electrocuting things, you're slowing things down. And a lot of Stubby's overclocks are pretty decent too. Some of these are just more basic ones. Uh, increase your rate of fire, maybe increase your electric damage, increase your magazine size, increase your ammo count. Uh, your unstable ones are definitely more for supportive roles and for AoE damage. With turret EM discharge, slowing everything down, dealing a lot of damage to stuff around it, and then turret arc also dealing a lot of damage to everything around the turrets. So it does require some setup if you want to run the uh, unstable overclocks, but it can be really strong against hordes. Stubby, I wouldn't really say is that great against single targets, so I don't think it would be in that category. Um, it, it's not bad by any means, but it's not as strong as some of the other weapons are. Then we've got the Loki Smart Rifle, or the Lock 1 Smart Rifle, or the Lock On Smart Rifle, depending on who you ask. Uh, this weapon's really good. I would say that this one is general purpose, I think. It's kind of weird, because the, the Loki does pretty well against swarms, really. Uh, especially if you're going with, like, blow-through rounds on it, you can hit multiple enemies, um... It, you can just hold down the trigger and you'll lock onto everything in the area so you don't need to aim all that well. It can work really well against single targets, especially with certain overclocks like Executioner and uh, the Electric Chemical Rounds. Some of its overclocks do make it so it's more something like single target damage, like Neural Lasso can be pretty good for both single targets and swarms. And Seeker Rounds is really good for single targets, especially if you're fighting like Dreadnoughts. For secondaries, we've got the PGL uh, Grenade Launcher. The Grenade Launcher, I would say, is mostly for swarms. Um... That does depend on the overclock, though. If you're running, like, Fat Boy, definitely for swarms. Or if you're running RJ250, you could say that it's a support weapon or that it's for swarms or general purpose, really. Um, with some of the other ones, you could also say it's more of a general purpose. that give you, like, more ammo. And then Hyper Propellant is definitely, like, more single target damage. So Grenade Launcher is surprisingly flexible with <laughs> overclocks. Without overclocks, it's still quite good. Um, does a lot of AoE damage. You usually have a decent amount of grenades. I would say the Grenade Launcher is another weapon that has no, like, bad or disappointing overclocks at all. Uh, maybe a slightly underwhelming, like, Pack Rat or Clean Sweep don't give you that much, but there's still a bonus, and the Grenade Launcher itself is quite strong, so. Then our other secondary for the Engineer is the Breach Cutter. I think I'm gonna put the Breach Cutter in general purpose. It's kinda hard to put the Breach Cutter in single target or swarms because it does both very well. Breach Cutter can do very high single target damage to enemies, mostly because it goes right through them, so you don't need to be that accurate with it. Uh, and so long as you hit something like a Praetorian or an Oppressor just head on, you're going to hurt it a lot. For overclocks, the Breach Cutter, again, doesn't really have any bad overclocks. It has some that would make it more specialized, where some of the overclocks like Inferno, you could argue are more for uh, hordes than for single targets. It's still going to hurt single targets a lot, and something like Return to Sender is more for single targets than hordes simply because you're likely going to kill the horde just outright before the line comes back to you. So I guess it's more specialized like that and maybe, you know, stronger plasma are. 
Again, a weapon that doesn't really have any bad overclocks. They're all pretty solid. And I think it fits into most roles pretty well. So I'd put it in general purpose. All right, then we've got scouts weapons. First up is the GK2 assault rifle. And I'm just going to put this one right into general purpose. This is like the the epitome of a general purpose weapon. Um, it has a decent magazine, does decent damage, pretty accurate, pretty quick reload. You got okay amounts of bullets with it. Most of its overclocks also complement those facts about it too, where there's only a couple that are a little bit specialized, but even then I wouldn't argue anything besides maybe the electrifying reload is kind of a supportive role. All the others are pretty straightforward and, you know, give you a little bit more damage, a little bit more rate of fire, a little bit more magazine size, which are always welcomed. Then we've got the M1000, another pretty straightforward weapon. I would put this one into the single target damage, especially with its focus shot. It does high damage per shot. With the focus shot, you do double damage. It doesn't have the most ammo, although certain overclocks do help with that, like minimal magazines. And uh, Hipster, you could argue, kind of fits into every category. As well as you could probably argue, like, Electro fo Focus Shot gives it more of a supportive weapon. But then something like Super Cooling Chamber gives it even more single target damage. I think it fits there probably the best. Then we've got the Drag 25. I would say the Drag 25 is probably more for Swarms. This is largely Scout's best weapon for Swarms, I would say. It's got a lot of bullets. You can shoot it pretty quick. It does okay damage per shot. It's not incredibly great against single targets at least without overclocks with overclocks it's a different story um, and a lot of the overclocks do actually lend themselves more to swarm killing uh, not all of them though but like the clean ones do with impact deflection giving you more uh, bouncy rounds you've got thermal liquid coolant which gives you more cooling great uh, rewiring mod which you could argue is maybe more supportive because you have a lot more bullets with this aggressive venting is kind of an odd one i don't know where i'd put it um, and then like something like Overtuned Particle Accelerator actually does give you a lot of single target damage. It just, it lowers your accuracy. Then we've got the Double Barrel Boomstick. I'm going to put the Double Barrel in, I think I'm going to put it in general purpose, actually. I was debating between this or single target, but it does do pretty well against swarms and single targets. You do have to be within pretty close range to make the most use out of the uh, Double Barrel. A lot of its overclocks do lend it more for single target damage, like the Jumbo Shells. But other ones can be pretty useful in just about any situation, like shape shells, special powder, you could argue, is more of a support role, um, or just a just quality of life role. I don't know where I'd put that one either. So I feel like the double barrel fits in general purpose, but if I had to pick between these two, I'd probably say it's more for single targets. I find it pretty flexible. I'm also going to put the Zukovs probably also in the general purpose. They do most jobs well, especially with the overclocks. The embedded detonators gives you a lot of single target damage. Cryo minelets work pretty well against hordes. Uh, your other overclocks are also pretty decent towards just about everything. They themselves can do pretty good single target damage if you build them for that. They can also do pretty well against swarms and be general purpose weapons. So I feel like they fit mostly in here. Uh, we do have all the equipment here, which I'll quickly go over, I guess, because it is here on this list. This actually isn't my list. I just found this online. So we have C4 here. C4 I'd probably put in more of the support category. You can build it for single target damage. You can build it for hordes. But you can also build it for mining. That's usually the way that I use it. So I feel like I would put it here. Uh, if you build it for more single target damage than up here or for more swarms, probably here. I wouldn't say that C4 is ever for, like, general purpose that would be a little bit weird. You'd run out very fast. Drills, uh, I guess I'd put drills in general purpose because you can kill things pretty quick with them and you can get to pretty much any place that you'd want. Pretty straightforward. Uh, Zipline launcher, definitely support. You can't shoot enemies with it, so it's kind of only in a support role. Shield, the shield is probably the most supportive equipment out of all the equipment because it lets you res people. You can throw it to just keep things away from objectives. You can push objectives with it. Uh, really solid thing. Platform gun, again, support tool. Um, you're going to use it to wall off areas. You're going to use it defensively. So you could also argue, I guess, it's general purpose. Turrets, I think I'd put in swarms. At least if you're going with two turrets. If you're going with a single turret, you could argue for single target. Because it does do pretty well then. It will also do well against hordes. Um, flare gun, okay, I get another support. Y you can use it as a weapon. It's not going to be a great weapon, but you can use it as one. And it's going to be super useful for your team. And then the zipline, or the uh, grapple hook, definitely support because it gets you around the map. You gotta, I guess, say it's general purpose too because I use the grappling hook a ton. So that's all the weapons in Deep Rock. I think that this tier list is a better representation of where I would say most of the weapons 
kind of specialize in or are, uh, or at least to me are a little bit more suited for. Uh, I didn't really want to do a regular tier list of just like the S, A, B tier because pretty much all of the weapons, especially when you're counting overclocks, are quite viable. Uh, even every overclock is fairly viable, maybe not the best, but fairly viable. So hopefully this was kind of helpful to somebody. Hopefully this starts more discussions about what the weapons kind of are for, rather than necessarily just picking one weapon that's a lot better than the others. If I had to pick one weapon out of this to say which is the best, I'd probably pick the Breach Cutter. That, that thing's pretty crazy against everything. Um, but... That would just be my choice. I could see any of these being picked as the best weapon or any of them being argued as the worst weapon. So thanks so much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was a little bit of a different video. Uh, if you guys did and you're new here, be sure that you get subscribed. That way you get notifications whenever I post these videos. Special thanks to the supporters of this channel. These are my members over here on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. They get early access to videos just like this. And if you would like to be a part of that, there are links down in the description that you can click. Thanks everybody who does that. I really do appreciate it. Uh, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!